Hello and welcome to the latest episode of PwC EMEA's Customer Transformation Podcast Series, The Future of E-Commerce. Now, we know the way the companies buy and sell from each other is changing forever. And we learned from B2C Commerce that those who ignored the trend or reacted too late often didn't survive and lost significant market share to those who did offer digital commerce experiences. Now, in this episode, we're going to look at how to prepare from a commerce transformation from a, from a business point of view. How do businesses start their commerce journey? What resources do they need? What are the common roadblocks they tend to hit? This podcast aims to answer those common questions and allay the fears of companies looking to get into the commerce space. Now, we're joined today by Michael Kornstein, who's a partner in PwC's New York office, Joe Lomano, who's the digital commerce lead in PwC's New York office, Quinton Pinar, who heads PwC's customer transformation practice in the EMEA region, and all the way from Switzerland, Carl Haney, who's the COO of PwC's EMEA customer transformation practice as well. Welcome to all of you. Let's kick off with you, Quinton. Let's set the scene. Why are we having this discussion right now? Why is the future of commerce a key theme? Yeah, I think you touched on it in your, in your intro, uh, Peter. Uh, you know, customer behaviors are changing. And, and what we saw um, in the B2C uh, world was many organizations that, that were slow to react to changing consumer behaviors found, found themselves in a very difficult spot. And so the, the buyers we have in B2B organizations are often sort of digital natives. They're Gen X, uh, Gen uh, Millennials and, and Gen Zs and, and are expecting um, rich digital experiences that make their jobs easier. They're expecting you know, real-time information about stock and availability, promos, and and really demanding of the organizations that they that they deal with that it's not good enough to just provide a price list. They're wanting information and an experience that makes their their, their role as a buyer much easier. Cole, let's swing to you. No, B2B commerce, it sounds obvious, but it's not. How do you define what commerce is in a B2B context? Uh, so, I, I, as was mentioned earlier, I think, you know, this led from the B2C experience into now, like Quentin mentioned earlier, the, the, the fact that the, the demographic shift is happening in a big way. Uh, when you think about B2B commerce, it's a little bit more complex than what they've experienced uh, from a B2C perspective in the past. You have a lot more logistics that you need to care for. Regulatory uh, landscape is a little bit more complex. And so everything that, that you have to, to deal with here, the relationships that you have with those with those customers, those B2B customers, it, is different and, and a little bit more difficult. And so you, you need to care for more of the customer journey and more a more complex customer journey when you're thinking about how you run B2B commerce for your company. And so you've got to think all the way down to the, you know, the end of the supply chain through to um, servicing your customer after you've made the, the purchase all in a digital way. And I think that the, the key here for companies to be thinking about is how do I take a digital first approach uh, so that every part of that customer journey is digitized in some meaningful way. Michael, over to you. What are, what are the incentives and the benefits for companies to really pursue a commerce model in 2022 and beyond? Yeah, so... I would say it's less about the benefits and it's more about the imperative, really. Uh, I think where we are right now is digital and commerce are becoming table stakes uh, with the modern B2B consumer. No longer can you expect, especially in this post-pandemic world, can you expect you know all of your interactions to be in person for your traditional field sales force, for example, to be you know, acting as your uh, a conduit for you to the customer. The customer is expecting digital interactions. And so what we're seeing is companies that were leaders in this space capturing market share and those that have been hesitant to make investments are rapidly trying to catch up. Thanks, Michael. Let's say to you, Joe, what are some of the trends that you're seeing right now in the B2B commerce space that businesses should know about and certainly be tracking, if not acting on. Yeah, one of the biggest trends that we're seeing is not only uh, companies trying to build out their digital channel with your traditional first party commerce experiences, 
But what we're seeing is a lot of companies are trying to figure out how they can get into the marketplace space. I think over time, what we're going to see is more and more marketplaces starting to pop up. And they're not going to be the marketplaces that are trying to be uh, everything to everyone. I think these are going to be specialized B2B, uh, highly curated marketplaces um, that we'll continue to see more and more of. Fantastic. Is that can, can I maybe something? add to what, what Joe said there? Because I really like what he, he touched on there. And I think that this there's this all of these companies that are thinking about this decision are, are kind of wondering, you know, how do I avoid that channel? How do I go omni-channel like I keep hearing about? And I think that, that the B2B marketplace is one really good way and, and an important trend that, that companies need to be thinking about. What is my strategy there? And that ties into the rest of the omni-channel approach that the companies need to be thinking about and taking advantage of when they think about what are all of the different channels that I'm going to try and sell my products through? And how do I how do I price those? How do I interact with the customers? And you know whether it's B2B marketplace or using headless commerce as a way to enable that, I think these are really important questions that companies should be asking themselves. Michael, you referred in your in your previous your previous chat about to that's B two B commerce being table stakes, but it's still it's not that simple. What are some of the challenges and the roadblocks that businesses are facing as they embark on a commerce journey? Yeah, I, I think I, I would I would categorize those in a couple different areas. You know, certainly there is a there's a technical component, so making sure that you have all of the different pieces in place, whether that be around your, your products, whether that be around your, your pricing, whether it be around your, your core commerce engine, also the experience and how you present that uh, to your customers. Uh, the other piece is, is certainly on the operational side. So how are you actually going to run commerce? How are you going to integrate that into your overall operation? How do you ensure that your your digital commerce and your traditional channels are working in concert and you truly are creating not just something that's multi-channel but something that is omni-channel and then the last piece is really from a from an organization and operating model how do you how do you enable that how do you make sure that you have the right skills and then also with your with your channels as well thinking through that really strategically because your your traditional distribution channels you don't want to necessarily just cannibalize those you really need to be thinking about how digital acts in concert with that joe you've been talking about how different businesses and different industries are diving into e-commerce now before you get in and following on what michael just said you know you should be considering how do you get the most out of it so my question to you is, how do you use commerce to really set yourself apart in what's actually becoming quite a crowded marketplace? Yeah, so I think it starts with really, you know, leadership, taking a step back and thinking about really their overall commercial strategy and how digital and the digital channel is going to play a part in that, right? This is more than just I'm going to put a website up and, and hope that people come and order something from me, right? This is really about how do I introduce a new channel into my existing sales and marketing capabilities? It's about how do I take complicated business models that we all know exist in, in you know, B2B, right? And bring them to the digital channel as a way to engage with my customers. And then thinking about, right? all of those those opportunities associated with it um, am i going to use the digital channel to exclusively engage with my customers or do i use it as another means another mechanism right to enable my my sales teams where i can um, interact with my uh, with my customers you know through the digital channel and through the in-person channels as well so I know that that was maybe a long answer, but again, if I can sum it up, it really all starts with rethinking your commercial strategy and how digital fits into that. For a final question, I'm going to put you all on the spot. I'm going to go around the room and ask you for a, a single top tip for businesses that are looking to get to the commerce journey or they're trying to really take it to the next level. And I'm going to stay with you, Joe. What's your top tip to the businesses out there right now? My top tip is, you know, if, if you are a company embarking on 
uh, a commerce initiative, a commerce transformation. Um, this is not a one and done exercise. This is this is you should really think about it as building a new functional area, new functional capability within your organization that you will need to continue investing in over over time and making sure that you not only have the right technology in place, but you have the right people and the right process as well. Michael, let's swing to you. What's your if I hadn't put you on the spot and narrow it down to one top tip for business. Yeah, I, and I, I would say, you know, kind of building on what Joe said as well. For me, the, the one thing is, again, this isn't a one and done. We're going to go implement digital commerce and it's done and we can go walk away, right? For for companies that are successful in this space, you really need to be thinking about it as a, a journey and an evolution for you. And so starting to to dip your toe into the water, to think through what is our strategy? How do we want to differentiate? How do we really want to put the customer at the center of what we're doing? And then starting with you know, some basics uh, such that we can get our, our product information through to the right channels in a digital way. Maybe there's you know one, one area of our business or uh, one region that we'll focus on, but really using that kind of test and learn approach uh, is really what what I see is uh, is going to be really key for companies such that they can be successful in the long term. Thanks, Michael. Cole, a last word from you. Uh, I think that the most important thing for me when I'm talking with with clients and customers is is to keep the customer at the heart of this transformation for you, for your company, and and so often. Uh, people think they understand their customers, but but in reality, they're they're not talking to enough. They're not understanding their needs well enough, and and they need to understand that a lot of B two B customers that that need how they interact with their company is changing, and and they need to apply a digital first mentality in order to better serve their customer. And that digital first mentality, like we said, it starts all the way at the very beginning with your supply chain and all the way through to customer service. You have to keep in all of the decisions you're making and the changes that you're making as part of that transformation, you've got to keep the customer at the center. Thanks, Cole. Quinton, I'm going to ask you to wrap up. What's the one thing that you want companies to believe about B2B commerce? Yeah, you know, Peter. As I think about it, I think uh, everyone's answers have really been been pretty good. But building on that on that idea, of this is not a one and done. This is this is really a journey that you're going to embark, and you're going to be building this capability over time. I think the right place to start is to be really specific about your product and your and your um, customer segmentation, and saying, you know, as I want to dip the toe, as I want to experiment and understand this. What are the right group of customers and products that I want to go digital with, with first? Maybe those are my sort of uh, long tail, sort of um, <clears throat> high, high volume, low margin. We go online with those first and leave the the, the high touch um, um, sales, you know, in person for a while. But, but the, those decisions are making sure that you're adequately matching uh, your product and customer segments and, and the channels that you want to support their their sales um, journey, I think, is a really important b- part of this whole this whole um, uh, journey, as as it was described. Thanks very much, Quentin, and thank you to all of you for joining us today. Until next time, goodbye.